Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniature. Today we're going to do an unboxing for the Victorias. The Victorias core box for 3rd edition Malifaux. It's a little banged up, but that's okay. Now, I always liked the idea of the Victorias, but I was not a big fan of the 2nd edition models. But I did kind of like the first ones, even though I painted them in the wrong order. So what do we got in the box here? We've got a jumping, flying Victoria. We've got a crouching, dual-bladed Victoria. Vanessa Chambers is now part of the crew. We do not have the Student of War anymore, it looks like. And we don't have the Ronin Girls. Instead we have... Well, we do, but not the same ones. So, new poses. Not sure how that'll turn out. But if they're anything like a lot of Outcast models in Malifaux, they are great, great, great conversion potential models for things like Shadows of Brimstone and other western style weird west games so what do we got waiting for us in the box well your cards which you obviously you're gonna need bases how many models six six sounds right we used to have seven didn't we maybe so yeah i don't know all right so what do we got here this sprue right here looks to be only vanessa and as always lots of tiny parts this to me looks like the Victorias, and now that's the Malifaux I know and love. Look at all these tiny little pieces. Oh boy. Yeah, there might be a huge time skip between when I film this and when I finish this, I'm afraid. Oh, uh, that's okay. And then it looks like we've got our three Ronin up here. She's tall, but then again, most people in Malifaux are tall. Funny enough, the Ronin look pretty simple. There's a lot less parts for them than there are for the two Victorias. Three models? Two models. Maybe it's just there's lots of tiny stuff. I don't know. I'm going to brave it. I'm going to sit down right now and I'm going to grab a cup of coffee. We're going to start building these ladies and hopefully it looks worse than it actually is. Fingers crossed. All right, we got the Victoria's crew all put together here. So let's start taking a look. Let's start off first with Victoria Chambers. I am assuming she's related to the other girls. I just never put two and two together there, unfortunately. A um, couple of things. So I'm not 100% sure, first of all, if she's in focus. There we go. If I've got her hand in the correct spot, uh, whether I do or not, it looks kind of like it did on the packaging. Um, you're going to want to be really careful removing her from the sprue, obviously, with that crazy delicate lightning going all around there. I wasn't 100% sure how those spell books are supposed to attach. There is a little spot where her chain on the bag attaches. I think it's a bag, at least a strap for the one bag, but then the other doesn't have any kind of special attachment point for the other one. So... We just kind of eyeballed it and went from there. Unfortunately, the contact point for her hair on her head is really close to her eyes, and a little bit of excess glue got in there and smeared her face together. I'm not happy about that. Um, she's barely standing on one foot. I kind of angled her, so obviously she can have both feet on the ground, because otherwise she's going to break. Um, yeah. Hair seemed to go together okay. A lot of the models this set had a lot of weird design decisions with how their hair wants to go together, such as the actual Victorias. I don't remember which is which, but our gun-wielding jumping one. I'm, I'm not 100% sold on this pose yet. Uh, it kind of works, I guess. I don't like where her feet are. I'm not 100% happy with where her lower half of her jacket is. Um, her head and her hair were really funky. There's actually a tiny little piece that needs to get set inside there, and it does not want to get in focus. Come on, lady. Anyway, there's a, on this side of the head, there's a tiny little part of the hair that you have to push in there to get it set. Um, that wasn't fun. <laughs> I don't like when models have teeny tiny little bits. And if you are one of the people that have been complaining 
about, oh, these third edition models are too easy to build. Well, you'll be happy with this set, absolutely. Um, there's a tiny little part where her shoulder pad here connects to the arm, which connects to the body. I completely overlooked that tiny little connecting piece, and so I made a big gluey mess before finally attempting to put her together. She seems to have survived all right. Let's take a look at the other Victoria. Again, a return to nice, tiny parts. Actually, she went together okay. I gotta give her credit. She was a little bit easier than her sister. Uh, getting the collar and the arms attached to line up with everything on her jacket was fun. Uh, getting the hair to attach to the head. Again, you just gotta kinda wiggle things around. And as always with Malifaux models, you yeah, really got to get the pieces sitting flush. Any little excess of plastic sprue nub sticking off, you gotta cut it clean because otherwise they will not go together. So there's the three named characters. Uh, overall, I'm pretty pleased with them. Again, like I said, I'm not super happy with the weird jumping position. I like the grounded Victoria. I think she looks pretty cool. Uh, it's not the most action-packed pose, but it works. And actually, of the three, I think Vanessa's is probably the best. Of course, there's like how many models of Vanessa at this point? But that's another story. Okay, let's take a look at the Ronin that came with this set. Um, I think the concept behind these Ronin, as opposed to the second edition ones, I can't speak for the first edition ones, I like these a lot better. They have a very frontiersy look to them. If you were ever going to grab a set of models to use for games like Shadows of Brimstone or any kind of weird West game, always, always look to the Outcasts for Malifaux because there's a lot of very Western styled models here. Uh, of the three, I think she's probably my favorite, the most realistically proportioned. She doesn't look bad. And let's talk about this one. I didn't realize she actually has a tiny, and I mean tiny, you can see it barely there, little cigarette in her hand there. This model did not want to go together correctly. There's a big gap there in between her body and her duster, and the sword kind of helps cover it a little bit, but I can't stand how long her arms look. It looks really long. Is it me? I don't know. Maybe it's me. I just It feels really long, and the pose seems kind of stiff. I do like her kind of just lounging around, taking a cigarette break, but the pose feels very flat. And then we have the third one, and I'm not sure who actually reclines in this kind of a position. Eh, yeah, getting those swords off of the sprue was a major, major pain. I mean, really. They're tiny, and you can see they, they're not exactly straight either. Somehow I managed. It really reminds me of... Um, Oh, one of those, the Thunder Brothers. There's the one that had the really thin knives. Kind of reminds me of that. But it also reminds me a little bit of good old Lady J in terms of posing. Just about as tall, too. Um, our friend with the cigarette actually kind of reminds me of this model from the other side. And you can see size-wise, both lines really scale well together. So if you wanted to mix and match and do your own homebrew stuff, for example, if you wanted to play in Her Majesty's Secret Service, Osprey makes, uh, these are great models for that. If you wanted to do something like Tombstone or any of the Weird West games or Shadows of Brimstone, I think they're good choices as well. Grabbing a couple other Malifaux models, a mixture of 2nd and 3rd edition. Good old Parker. You can see size-wise they're going to fit in really nice. Um, every now and then, especially with 2nd edition in particular, you'd have models that really just did not match size-wise. And, I, and the, My first thought is always the, the samurai. The samurai where there's like the giant one on the ground in the... Oh gosh. The marshals, the death marshals. There's the one on the ground too with his giant coffin that's like bigger than a human. We're having a couple other models. Now see, I really like the proportions on this version of Lady J, Lady Justice. Uh, the katana itself is a lot thicker. I know people complained it wasn't as anywhere near as dynamic as her earlier second edition, but to me, it's a solid model. Really good proportions. Uh, it doesn't look as elongated as some of the limbs, especially like, I think the Ronin are most guilty of that in this set. 
Uh, they just... That arm. That arm's really driving me nuts. Oh, yeah. Which is a shame because they're great kits. Um, I really dig these a lot more than the second edition ones. The second edition ones looked like white girls cosplaying as, you know, Asian people. And that wasn't cool. Go Euripides. Gotta get his moment in the sun, too. Probably needs more sun anyway. So, overall, a cool little set. Um, Price-wise, I'm like... If you're going to play nothing but Malifaux exclusively, I'd say, yeah, it's probably a pretty good deal. Um, unfortunately, with the way they have packaged 3rd Edition, you know, if you wanted just these Ronin, or you wanted just this version of Vanessa, or you wanted just the Chambers girls in general, uh, I don't think you're going to really be happy with the price. I think if you're starting it out, or you want to collect a new crew it might be a good idea and i'm looking for a model and that's why i'm kind of just rambling here and ah there she is okay it's like i knew i had one of my original medals still somewhere i don't know where the other one is for one thing their taste in hair styling has significantly improved but yeah i don't know if this is the one i customized or the other one is i don't know but you can see there's been some definite evolution in terms of how they pose and style these models. So overall, a cool kit. Um, I'm happy I got it when I did. I got a good deal on it. But I think Weird definitely needs to take a look at how these models are getting sculpted. Um, I thought for the most part, I know a lot of people weren't happy with the early releases for 3rd edition. But to me, I really thought that they were a lot more in line with what was expected in terms of proportions tabletop wise maybe it's just me being picky that's entirely possible uh but you know on the other hand it's always cool to have a bunch of you know sword wielding cowgirls so i can't complain about that either so take of that what you will if you're in the mood for tiny little parts and a return to old school you know hair pulling out frustration of trying to get things to fit malifaux uh i consider that a plus in some ways you might as well uh, definitely do take a look at these ladies with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Say thanks for watching. We'll see you back here soon. Bye bye.